Okay, this video is help you study for the final. The final is going to be about 60% since the last midterm. And I'm just going to highlight a few things. This is not all you need to know. I'm just going to talk about the key ideas we, we, we covered. <clears throat> so in chapter 12, we covered the distance formula, covered vector addition and subtraction. Remember, u minus v is the vector you add to v to get u, right? Uh, we talked about the dot product and the, the theorem that follows from the dot product, especially helpful when you're trying to find the angle between two vectors. And, and uh, the dot product is a good way to determine if two vectors are orthogonal, if the dot product is zero. We talked about the direction angles. Those are the angles between the vector A and the axes. And it turns out the um, components of the unit vector in the direction of A happen to be the cosines of, of, the, of the direction angles. You, you can see that because cosine alpha by this formula here is, is A dot I over magnitude of A magnitude of I. Which, which turns out to be a1 over a, magnitude of a, which is precisely the first component of the unit vector in the direction of a. And that's also why this is true, because since this is a unit vector, this has to be true. Um, we talked about the component of b in the direction of a. That tells you how much a vector of b is in the direction of another vector a. It can be thought of as b dotted with the unit vector in the direction of a. And then if you want to turn that distance into a vector, you just got to that's called the projection of b onto a. You just got to multiply the unit vector in the direction of a by the component of b in the direction of a. Let's see, we talked about the cross product of two vectors. That's a vector that's orthogonal to both a and b. And this, this theorem uh, about the magnitude of the cross product, it's a good way to find the distance from a point to a line. We'll see that in just a minute. And two, two vectors are parallel, f and only f, the, the cross product is the zero vector. Another way to tell if two vectors are parallel, of course, is to, is to determine if one vector is a multiple of the other. In fact, that might actually be easier than doing this. Here, here's an example of a cross product. If vector a is in the xy plane and b is along the, the z-axis, then a cross b would be pointed this way, uh, using the right-hand rule. a cross b is, is a vector like this. So the x component would be positive and the y component would be negative. Talked about lines. To find the equation of a line in R3, you've got to have a point, x not, y not, z not, and a direction vector v. So that if, if, this, if you want to have, if you have any other point on the line x, y, z, if this is the a position vector for that point, it, it can be written as the vector sum of R not plus t times the v vector. And if you look at the components of that vector, R, you get the parametric E equations for the line. And if you solve for t, uh, you get the symmetric form of the line, and the uh, A, B, C are the uh, direction numbers. Those are the components of the direction vector. For vector, uh, for, for planes now, we um, for, to, to define a plane, you need a point, x not, y not, z not, and a normal vector. So that if x, y, z is any other point on the plane, you can form this vector r minus r naught. And since r minus r naught lies in the plane, when you dot that vector with n, you get zero. And if you just go through the computations, you get the equation for the plane. Let's look at a couple examples here. Uh, to find the distance from a point to a plane, the, uh, x naught, y naught, z naught is, is a point on the plane, and x1, y1, z1 is a point not on the plane. You form this vector b, and so the distance is just the component of b on n. It's actually the absolute value of that. It's the absolute value of that. Anyway, so when you go through the computations, you, you get the, uh, the formula for the distance between a point and a plane. If you wanted to find the distance between two planes, then um, you would just pick a point on the second plane and you'd go through the same process. Now, like I said earlier, to find the distance between a point that's not on a line and a line, uh, you could form this vector n from the line to that point and then uh, this distance d is the magnitude of n sine theta. But using the uh, theorem on the magnitude of the cross product, you can write it in, in terms of n and v. So that's, that's a nice way to do that. Uh, here, here's a couple more examples. Suppose I give you two lines and I ask you, are they intersecting, parallel, or skew? First of all, to determine if they're parallel, like I said, is one vector, is one direction vector a multiple of the other? The answer is no in this case. Do they intersect? Well, let's, let's see. Set the x-coordinates equal to each other, you get this. Set the y-coordinates equal, you get this. And when you solve that system of two equations, two unknowns, you get that. That's true when t equals 2 and s equals 1. If you plug those into the equations for x and y, you get 4 and negative 1. 
But wait, uh, make sure you plug those into the Z coordinates and make sure they agree. And in this case, they do, negative five. Now, the lines would be skew if you showed it wasn't parallel. And when you try to show that it intersected, you got no solution. In this case, you would, you would say skew. How about this? If I give you two planes, can you find the line of intersection and the angle between the, the two planes? Okay, well, for the line of intersection, since it's a line, you need a vector, a direction vector, and a point. The direction vector, you can use the cross product of the two normal vector vectors. Since the line lies in both planes, it has to be orthogonal to both of these vectors, right? A anyway, so, so th this, this, this would be your direction vector. And to find a point that's on both planes, all you have to do is um, maybe let z equal zero. You could do that. And then you could solve the system of two e equations and two unknowns for, um, for x and y. Now to find the angle that's between the, the planes, it turns out the angle between the planes is the same as the angle between the normal vectors. So you could use this formula for that. Let's see, to finish chapter 12, make sure you go over the quadric surfaces. Make sure you know how to identify the, these, these familiar surfaces and the names and, and traces. And in addition to that, you, sh you should be able to uh, be, be familiar with different types of cylinders, parabolic cylinders, elliptical cylinders, things like that. And that's it. And good luck on the final, everybody.